Hello everyone and welcome back to another character review, finally, after so many uh, patches of nothingness because I just didn't find any characters really that interesting for me to pull even or just review. I did mention Arlequino, but even she was pretty much in the absolute back. Uh, well, in her character review, if we have a giant gap again, uh, like this one. But Natlan is here and I decided to pull for Kinnich, not because I really was extremely interested in Kinnich, but he's at least a character from Natland that I'm fine with, let's say. And so, and honestly, you know, every single Natland character has an interesting gameplay mechanic because of the Night Soul stuff, and because most of their skills are most likely going to be uh, sort of uh, movement-based, because of they need to, you know, match up with the Sor Saurians. So there's that, so again, they're, they all have some interesting effects. But again, like, I don't like the personality or something else, or I just don't need them, honestly, because, like, no, I don't need another Hydro DPS, Moalani. And Kinnich, yeah, honestly, I didn't need another Dendro DPS, but Kinnich is different, and we will be, uh, well, taking a look at why he's different from other Dendro characters. So, yeah, Kinnich, our first Natalan character we are covering, and uh, he is a Dendro Claymore character. He's also a short male character. My fucking goodness, how many short male Claymores do we have in this fucking game? Like, it's genuinely insane, people. Insane how many short male Claymores we have, right? I'm gonna go nuts. Also, another, like, Dendro Claymore. Add that with Kave in there. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Anyways. So yeah, he's a Dendro Cl Claymore character, he is an attack scaler for the most part, and his main damage source is his elemental skill. This is a quick introduction, so I think we should immediately go into his kit, right? Uh, we won't be talking about his normal attacks, as they aren't really part of his kit, like, it, they're completely unnecessary, you can even skip leveling them up in the talents, so... You can do that. Like It's a nice way to, I guess, save up on resources. Nothing uses the numbers of the normal attacks, and you'll never weave in any normal attacks in Kinnich's combo. So again, we, won't, we will be keeping the auto-attack uh, section. And we will be immediately going to the skill. So, Kinnich has two variations, I can say, in his skills. In his skill. Uh, the way it goes is uh, when he's off combat and when he's on combat. Again, in order to match the Saurians that you can transform to in the overworld, every Natalan character has a movement uh, version of their ability, or just they can always, or, you know, the combat version can also be used in the overworld to do anything traversal. So, Kinnich, the way he, it works that is that when you're off battle, uh, his uh, skill becomes a grappling hook that can be activated twice, much like the Saurian of his uh, tribe. It's really nice actually to use because, well, I don't know if you played Wu, it was actually also nice to use there. And you have two activations here. Um, it actually kind of feels nice to have momentum in the air, some sort of momentum, because it's not exactly. But you know, every time you you glide in Genshin, of course, you drop like a brick when you let go of the glide. But with Kinnich, it's again really nice to actually have a bit of movement to actually move fast in the air when uh, going around the overworld. I actually really liked it. And of course, you can grapple on to the grapple points around Natalan. But what happens when you are in combat? So what happens is that Kinnich will attach, will fire, fire the grapple and attach to an enemy. And then Kinnich is able to constantly attack while moving left and right of the enemy in a circle. You constantly can just mash the fire, the uh, attack button, and he fires like these loop shots, are there, as they are called. While these are normal attacks, they are not, again, they don't use the multipliers from his normal attacks. It's a separate multiplier in the skill, so again, no need to level up the normal attacks. Now, as he is uh, attached to an enemy, he enters the Night Soul Blessing bullshit state. Um, and he fills up Night Soul points when attacking and being attached to an enemy, even just uh, just as the duration of the skill goes, he ever so slightly regenerates some points, but mostly when he is attacking. Uh, and when the Night Soul points are full, he can unleash a cannon attack that deals a ton of damage. Now, there are many ways to generate more Night Soul points as you are grappled onto an enemy. You'll see these areas pop up in different sides of an enemy that you're grappled to, and these are like weak spots, as uh, the game calls them. And if Kinnich fires a loop shot while standing in these areas, he'll generate a big amount of points. These constantly appear left and right. It can be difficult to actually go to these areas, depending on how the enemy moves, how you want to move and stuff. So while going for them is what you should be doing in order to generate as many Night Soul points as possible, 
don't like go crazy because you missed one of them or two of them. It's not absolutely necessary to always shoot loop shots from these areas and they disappear pretty quickly as well. And again, it has to do with, you know, firing a cannon shot and then this area disappears and it reappears on another side. Like, it's... It's complicated, but once you, once you play with Kinnit, you'll realize that, again, you hunt for these areas, but it's not absolutely necessary to always hit them 100%. Additionally, from his first Ascension Talent, uh, when he attacks enemies that are in the burning state, or when Burgeon is triggered, the, this allows him to generate even more points. In a full burning team, he comfortably gets around 4, maybe 5 shots, uh, being a rare occasion. In somewhat burgeon teams, we'll, 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 I'll explain what I mean with somewhat burgeon teams when we get to teammates. He gets three comfortably, and four is achievable depending on the situation. So in burning, te in full burning teams, four to five, and burgeon just minus one it three comfortably for uh, ever so often. And that's the skill. Um, by the way, his uh, second essential talent is also tied here, which is the Night Soul Burst bullshit, which I guess we should explain these a little bit now since we are covering our first Natlan character. But simply put, you know, Night Soul State is just a bullshit mechanic like Nevmusia. Um, the main thing is that you get Night Soul points on these Natlan characters. That's about it. Everybody does something different completely, genuinely. Uh, but the Night Soul Burst is something shared among everybody. It's nothing, it has nothing to do with characters' bursts, just so you know. Yes, it is horrendously named, but what happens is when you have one Natlan character, at least one, one Natlan character in your party, if you deal damage in any way, you'll trigger a Night Soul Burst. Yeah, that's it, genuinely. You trigger a Night Soul Burst. It doesn't deal damage, it doesn't apply an element, nothing of the sort, but the only thing is tied to characters' talents. That's it. Genuinely. And the more Natlan characters you have, the lower the cooldown of this Night Soul Burst mechanic. Of course, you can tell that they are ready to shove Natlan characters uh, and power creep the shit to push you to pull. It's, it's time, you can see it. Ah, yeah, yeah, oh, wait, wait until, just to wait until the, the version review, just so you know. A bit of a spoilers, just so you know, oh boy. Anyway, uh, but yeah, that's the Night Soul Burst. And it's usually tied to, to character's talents, and for Kinnich, when you trigger a Night Soul Burst, he gets a stack, I think maximum is two stacks, and when you fire a cannon shot, and you've triggered a Night Soul Burst, you have the, the stack, it deals a fuck ton more damage. When I say fuck ton more damage, I mean a fuck ton more damage. Where Kinnich can easily hit, let's say, 125k, he can easily make that 150 plus with a Night Soul Burst stack. So you can see how bullshit this is becoming. So yeah, that's the skill. It's basic, honestly, like nothing extremely complicated. So yeah, every, again, very simple. Oh, and by the way, if the enemy dies or you get a little far away from the enemy, uh, if there is another enemy in the in your range, Kinnich will, uh, will attach to the other enemy. Additionally, this cannon shot is mostly single target, but it does have a slight bit of AoE, so if there are enemies clumped up together, you can actually get a bit of AoE out of Kinnich. Honestly, Kinnich is single target, 2-3 enemies maximum. Uh, uh, other than of anything more than that, he is not that good. And that's the skill. And then we move on to the ultimate. The ultimate calls down Ajar. That's it. Ajar, the dragon, you know him. The annoying, the annoying fucker, because I hate him. Uh, but he does bring out a bit of Skara every now and then, in that he insults everybody, so I like that. Uh, but the ult just calls down Ajo. He is pretty insignificant, so... Yeah, <laughs> he does a little bit of damage and then also applies a little bit of Dendro. Again, the thing is completely insignificant, so Kinnich is energy-free. I kind of don't suggest leveling up the burst, but keeping it at a nice, you know, 6-7 uh, level is fine. But yeah, it doesn't deal a lot of damage, and the application, or the dungeon application, isn't needed. It just, if it maybe did elemental skill damage, somehow, um, potentially it could have been fine for some extra damage, but it doesn't. And it doesn't help Kinnich either with uh, generating Night Soul points, which could have actually been something, uh, now that I think about it. But yeah. It's not needed at all, so again, Kinnich is pretty energy-free. You don't really need to use his burst. 
um, at most, if you really need to extend the duration of your rotation for some cooldowns or something, you can use it. It lasts around 1.7 seconds uh, for the for the animation. How do I know that? It's because um, actually, if you use Kinich's burst during his Night Soul state, so while you use his skill, the skill will be extended by 1.7 se seconds. So it's actually kind of 3.4 seconds of extension on your uh, in your rotation but yeah it's actually really nice it makes up for the lost time uh that you get from the burst animation and adds it to the night soul blessing so it's actually you, you don't lose anything so yeah that that's that other than that that's the kit we talked about the two passive talents other than that it's just natlan exploration stuff on if you see any extra talents on these natlan characters and then constellation-wise, all of his constellations are busted, uh, especially C1, because it has a free 100% critted damage to his skill. Yeah, on C1, people. C1, where other C6s get 60... When other, when other 5 stars in their C6 get like 60% crit damage, Kinich gets a 100% crit damage on C1. Yeah, no, 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 there's no power creep, people, no, 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 oh my goodness, so yeah, if you want any uh, Kinich cons, they're actually extremely va nice and valuable, especially those early ones, so go nuts, but yeah, that's the kit, it's all tethered, all, all haha, tethered around the skill, and the skill does a fuck ton of damage, so uh, let's move on to artifacts then, artifacts are pretty simple, you use Obsidian Codex, nothing else. It's Obsidian Codex, the Natlan set, it's 15% extra damage while in the Night Soul Blessing state, and then 40% free crit rate. Um, if you want anything else, you can use the Burning set, which is fine, the Unfinished Reverie set, which is focused around burning and gives you plenty of damage. And lastly, in the last sort of ditch effort, Golden Troop. Um, out of these three, while the burning set might give you more damage, or you might think that it gives you more damage because, yes, it does, um, the absolute value of 40% crit rate of Obsidian Codex plus the 15% extra damage bonus, it's unmatchable. It's very similar. It's a very similar situation to Mar Marcus Hunter, where you could have had, let's say, Nouvellet use an HP set or even um, what was it? Heart of Depth to get extra damage, him getting free 30% a uh, 36% extra crit rate is just invaluable, right? So that's why everybody will run Obsidian Codex. And as for Golden Troop, Golden Troop has a lot of skill damage, but Golden Troop is focused on characters that are off the field. Uh, so since Skinnage is on the field, he doesn't get the maximum buff of Golden Troop. But here's the thing. Uh, the Burning set, Unfinished Reverie, it's paired with the Bond of Life set. And unless you have Arlequino uh, or Chlorinde, you never fucking farm this set. Or Emily. You never went into this fracking domain if you don't have these characters. So it's kind of rare to have a really good set of this burning one. So, and because Marcus Hunter was basically for all Natlan, for all Fontaine characters, I would guess that you have some decent Golden Troop uh, artifacts. So until you have a decent enough obsidian codex set you can just use golden troop i have a friend that actually does that they just have really bad luck on obsidian codex so they are just using golden troop right now because they farmed maricus hunter for so long so you can do that but I, but a mediocre obsidian codex set will just outperform golden troop like like hell of course and for the burning set you're gonna need some really good substats to again get even close to the value of Obsidian Codex. Uh, and then as for stats, uh, Attack Sands, of course, because, of course, Dendro Damage Goblet, and maybe an Attack Goblet in the worst case scenario that you don't have a Dendro Damage Goblet, but now, by, by now you should have one. But if you have a really busted Attack Goblet, hit it, uh, you know, use it until you get a Dendro Damage Goblet. But overall, just use Dendro Damage. And then, of course, Crit Circlet. And as for substats, crit subs and attack. You don't need ER, as we said. At the like at the very worst, grab some ER substats if your team really needs the extent of uh, the dura of the rotation. Other than that, crit attack, crit attack. No EM because Kinich doesn't scale off of EM. Additionally, he doesn't like Electro. And here we go, I guess, into teammates since we finished with artifacts. Teammates are focused on burning and buffing Kinich. Second Dendro isn't needed because, again, of no EM scaling on Kinich himself, 
but because moving artifacts between characters is a pain in the ass, because in four years in Genshin we have not gotten fucking loadouts, which I want to fucking strangle somebody in the dev team for not giving us artifact loadouts, uh, using a, central, a second Dendro character because they hold Deepwood is not a problem at all. Unless you already have a fitting character for Kinich teams that holds Deepwood, then going double Dendro is perfectly fine. Yayo is a cheap option because at C1 she actually offers a Dendro damage bonus, so that's kind of nice. Uh, and Baizu is nice for his shield and easy healing. So, uh, yeah, and Kinich getting staggered is really annoying, so having a shield like Baizu or we'll see later Toma is really nice. So, yeah, uh, Baizu for his shield is nice so that Kinich doesn't get staggered. You might think Emily since she is uh, also burning related, but she doesn't actually do anything for the team overall. She doesn't offer buffs, and Kinich usually stays away from enemies, so taking burning damage isn't a problem, because it really reduces the burning damage you take. Again, Kinich usually stays pretty much away, so you're never gonna be getting burning damage. She does increase the overall calculations of team damage. Like, you give her Unfinished Reverie, and then the team damage is significant. But she doesn't hold Deepwood, by the way. Her damage falls off like insane if she is the one holding Deepwood. So if you're planning on using Emily and Kinich together, you're gonna need to find a third character that holds Deepwood. Preferably not Dendro, so that can really depend on what you've got available. But yeah, she, she is like one of the best characters for overall team DPS. But she doesn't buff anyone. At all. <laughs> um, so yeah, she you can completely ignore her for Kinich teams, even if both of them are burning related. Pyro is next, since you need burning as we said. There are plenty of options, some more damage focus, some more application or utility focus. Xiangling is nice for damage, and since she is glued to Bennett for energy, it's not a problem, it's not a problem for the attack scaling Kinich. But you need to play around her burst, and, my, and that might not be the easiest task, let's say. The way that the thing turn, uh, you know, swirls around your character, you're gonna need to go counterclockwise in order to hit uh, as many times with uh, Xian Ling. She can hold deep wood actually, she can lose a little bit of DPS since you're not playing Vape, right? So, uh, so Crimson Witch isn't actually the best option, right? Because again, you're playing, um, you're playing non-Vape, you might want to go for something like Emblem, but she can actually hold deep wood as her DPS doesn't fall off as much. And also, Kinnit is your main, main DPS, trust me. And I said, Bennett. Bennett is Bennett. It's Bennett. Staying in his burst can be a challenge to some, uh, or with enemies that move a lot, but usually you should be fine to stay within Bennett's burst. I tried him out. Just go left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, and I was easily inside of Bennett's burst. Also, Bennett's buff does last for a slight second after you move away from the circle, so just moving ever so slightly away from the circle is not going to destroy your damage instantly. Uh, Toma is very, very good if you can meet his building requirements, because they gave him horrendous stats. Uh, that being C4 and pretty decent artifacts. He offers really good shields and amazing pyro application, making him one of Kinich's best teammates, honestly. He can hold the deep wood, definitely, but the problem is, do you have the stat do you need the stats from the artifact sets um, to make Toma useful? Because uh, in my team, I use Toma with Emblem of Severed Fate and an HP set because I just simply need a lot of HP because his shield isn't that strong else and I need the security of always having his burst. So that's why I give him Emblem. So unless you have some really good artifacts on Deepwood for Toma and the team overall generates a good amount of particles and again, Toma is s securely has his burst always available, he can hold Deepwood. He's a good Deepwood holder. But else, if you're having trouble getting his old, his shield just breaks constantly. You might need to think. Uh, you might need to think for somebody else to hold Deepwood. Um, other other pyros. There's Daisha. She would be at the same spot as Toma, but she's Daisha. So I would rather use Toma honestly. Um, as for other teammates that aren't pyro or if then I mean Dendra again, as we said for Deepwood holders. Well. Burgeon is also a reaction, as we said, that gives Kinnich Night Soul points. And really only Furina is good for Kinnich. Her lower than other Hydro's application means that burning isn't disrupted a lot, and her skill triggering Vaporize on burning enemies is a lot of damage. And then with someone like Toma, you trigger Burgeon. 
Uh, but even with Furina, you can easily see to you can easily see Kinich accumulating less Night Soul points. But because of Furina's massive damage buff and the damage that she offers herself, you make up for the lost cannon shot. In my experience, you know, say with the Burning Team, you you have an average, let's say, absolute average of 130,000, right? And then you slot in Furina and you get a 180,000 kinetic cannon shots so again the minus one shot that you'll get is easily made up for the from the extra damage and again Furina's own uh damage um other hydros simply just don't benefit kinetic much or disrupt burning too much like Xingxu or yellen while they offer interruption resistance and damage buffs respectively again they don't fit kinetic that much so i would go for pure burning if you don't have Furina. Because again, Yellen, she has a damage buff, but it's not as much, of course, as Furina's. And again, her Hydra application can really ruin your Night Soul accumulation. Uh, and Xingxu is the same. While he has a bit of um, interruption resistance, his insane Hydra application will easily destroy your um, burning. And Burgeon isn't that reliable, I would say. Um, other flex characters are very flex, honestly. Someone like Zhongli is nice because of his shield, you know, having um, the resistance reduction. He could be holding deep wood, but good fucking luck. Good fucking luck hitting the hitting uh, enemies with the Zhongli's pillar for deep wood, and of course it could easily break. Fischl, of course, is a good idea, um, but, you know, she could also hold LG for the end and tenacity of the Millilith for a bigger attack, but for more attack buffs on Kinich. But you simply honestly do not want Electro because it heavily disrupts Kinich's accumulation of Night Soul points. I did try it myself. Yes, it nets results because quicken and spread and aggravate scale off of attack. They're not just EM scaling um, reactions, but it feels so much worse playing um, playing Kinnich with an Electro, like, you just feel like you'd never hit a cannon shot. So, I just cannot really, uh, recommend, uh, Electro characters. Maybe Cookie? But also, again, what, what is she gonna do? She's gonna heal Kinnich, but what else? Right. So, again, I think I would rather play double, uh, Dendro and double Pyro for pure burning, or potentially have a Forina in there, rather than fuck myself over with somebody like Zhongli or Fischl and ruin kind of the fluidity, honestly, that you feel in a Kinnich rotation. Um, so yeah, like, until we get an Atlan Pyro unit, so Mavuika, honestly, or Dendro unit or Hydro unit compatible with Kinnich, we're a bit stuck on teammates. And I mention these because of the Cinder City artifacts, since a Natlan unit with it will buff Kinnich nicely. Um, I doubt that people will use Ororon, since, as we said, Kinnich doesn't like Electro, and Ororon is focused on Electro charged, even if he doesn't have the best, best application of Electro. But again, I don't see people using Ororon in order to buff Kinnich with the Cinder City artifacts. Um, and in general, by the way, don't even think about burning damage, and don't focus your Pyros on burning or on Burgeon if you run Forina. If the Abyss or an event or whatnot gives you EM buffs, then nice, you get some extra burn, burgeon damage, but don't build your Pyros for these reactions at all. The damage is completely insignificant and it doesn't matter. Again, just like Emily, uh, Kinnich does not use burning damage. <laughs> they just want enemies to be in the burning state, that's all. And again, burgeon, it, has a, it adds a bit of damage. My Toma, average, on average, hits around eight to 9,000 burgeon without with his regular HP energy recharge build. So two Bloom uh, cores means that's, that's, that's an extra 16,000, which is perfectly fine for a character that's there for just shielding and pyre application, right? So yeah, like you can get some extra burgeon damage. If again, uh, an event gives you some good EM buffs uh, and the stage is good for Kinnich, hey, you'll deal a bit more burgeon damage. And again, the, the, the damage will accumulate and you'll get it, it, everything's gonna be good. Even if Kinnich isn't an EM scaler, the team will benefit overall only again if you're running Burgeon. Again, burning sucks. <laughs> so that's it for teammates and teams. You can get a lot of combinations out of these teammates. Again, uh, mostly just pure burning. And a Nemo character isn't needed, honestly, at all. And Burgeon, again, only with Furina and somebody like uh, Toma or Daisha. Maybe Shandling, um, but... Again, I said my stuff, you go ahead and do whatever you want. As for weapons, they are pretty straightforward. Is it DPS focused, then it's good. 
Serpent Spine is at good at it, is at, is as good as it always was. At low refines, it can rank below a free-to-play option, believe it or not, but it's Serpent Spine, so it's perfectly usable, and the more refines that you've got, the better. Um, another weapon is the Talking Stick, which is the other Battle Pass weapon that came with Fontaine. It gives you attack and elemental damage bonus when affected by different elements, but unfortunately you're gonna have to go through a crazy hassle to activate those effects, especially the second one. If you're affected by Pyro, which you can use with Bennett, you get attack. But then if you get affected by an other uh, element, you get an elemental damage bonus. If there was an easy way to get affected by, by Pyro and another element, this would be an amazing weapon in general, honestly, and definitely for Kinnage. But you can only reliably do the Bennett buff, which is the attack buff. So, unfortunately, I would rather go for Serpent Spine rather than the Talking Stick. I just wanted to mention this. Then there's Tidal Shadow, the Fontaine Craftable, that is um, that is on the bottom of recommendations. It works, but rather, but I would rather use a Serpent Spine or the Earthshaker, the Natland Craftable. Uh, this bad boy is made for Kinnich, and at R5, it's very competitive. But you need R5, so good luck with the new bullshit billets, because of course we needed new fucking billets with Natlan. No, 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 we couldn't have used the Fontaine billets. Why the fuck did we get new billets? Come the fuck on. So yeah, at low refines, it's a good weapon, definitely for Kinnich. If you don't have a Serpent Spine, or it's or somebody else is using your Serpent Spine, then use the Earth Shaker. And if you can manage to somehow get it at R5 with billets, and you don't need the other billets or whatnot, then sure, it's really good, it's very, very competitive. But again, you'll need five billets. So, good luck, that's all I'm gonna tell you. And then there's the five stars. Anything crit or attack related is a good option. Wolf's Gravestone, I'm, I use Wolf's Gravestone, does amazingly. The Unforged, when you have a shield, which is usually a Toma, a Baizu, will easily, uh, use, uh, will easily be able to keep the Unforged uh, buff up. Uh, Red Horn is okay just for the crit, that's Ito's weapon. Uh, Beacon, which is uh, Daisha's weapon, is especially good if you manage to take a bit of burning damage to trigger the second effect, but even without taking damage, the you know it has good crit stats, good base attack, and it gives you a little bit of attack when the elemental skill hits, so it's perfectly fine. Uh, Verdict, which is Navia's weapon, is okay for the crit and attack, but honestly, I don't think it's worth bringing a Geo character to trigger its second effect. You get some passive attack, and again, it has good base attack, some okay crit, um, but you could get some extra sk elemental skill damage, which Kinnich would love if you trigger Crystallize, um, but again, I don't think it's worth bringing a Geo character to actually manage that. Um, if there's perhaps an enemy in the Abyss event or whatnot that is Geo and would allow you and will allow you to trigger uh, Crystallize, then Verdict is gonna give you a bigger buff. Again, it's a perfectly fine uh, weapon, but you most likely have a Navia that uses it. But again, if you have a spare one, Kinnich can use it, and if the situation arises, it's gonna be even better. And it's just general pretty good. All of these weapons, uh, again, Wolf's Greystone, Unforged, Beacon, Verdict, they're all per pretty much the same. Uh, and then lastly is Fang of the Mountain King, which is Kinnich's signature weapon, so you know it's the best. I don't think I need to say much on this one, right? It's tailor-made for Kinnich, it is amazing, holy fuck, it has the highest base attack in the entire game. Genuinely, 745 I think it is, right? It has the highest base attack in the entire game. My goodness. Of course it, of course it has the lowest crit rate as well, but you get 40% crit rate from Obsidian Codex, so it doesn't fucking matter. So yeah, use... If you pulled for Fang of the Mountain King, you pulled for Fang of the Mountain King. Although, honestly, I don't like it. I don't like its design. And speaking of, as we are finishing off the video, I do not like Kenich's 8-bit uh, aesthetic. What the fuck does the 8-bit aesthetic do in fucking Natlan? Like, it doesn't make sense. Overall, Natlan is just all over the place when it comes to technology. And listen, I mean... You know, the people in Genshin, in the Genshin world, say that Fontaine is the most technologically advanced, right? But honestly, if you look at it from our perspective, what do we see as more technologically uh, advanced, right? Like, that is also something that we need to, to you know, kind of, like, see. The, the people in Taviat might think that the automatons that, uh, that Fontaine has is the epitome of technology, while well, we see things like fucking DJ sets in Natlan as the more technology advanced thing, right? But overall, again, I don't understand Kinnich's 8-bit thing. 
I don't understand why Ajo had to literally be a 2D sprite in the game. It doesn't make any fucking sense, people. Come on, he could have easily been a, a simple dragon familiar. And honestly, that reminds me of Dragon Guard a bit. Oh, no, fuck. Oh, shit. <laughs> but yeah, like, it, why? Why the 8-bit aesthetic? What the fuck does it do in a tribal nation? Like, what? Huh? You people are living in huts. What the fuck are you doing with 8-bit? What are you doing with, like, complex computing? Like, seriously, I don't understand this this aesthetic. But never, but like overall, Kinich's like like um, like outfit is okay. Like he doesn't look completely out of the ordinary. But then again, you slap Ajo next to him, and it's like, what the fuck? Uh, uh. And of course, yes, he does look like Ben Ten. My goodness, he does. <laughs> and yes, I do enjoy that they used you know uh, Sasuke and Naruto's VAs in the Japanese version. I do like. Um, well, actually, I, I knew Kinichi's VA mostly from Bleach, of course, and many, many other anime. Uh, but yeah, like, I do enjoy his VA as well. <laughs> anyway, this has gone on for, uh, for too much, for too long. So, thank you for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Next character review should most likely be Ororod. If I try to snipe him, I want to try him out in a few teams to try some things out. Um, but yeah, should be Ororod. N Rizli is never getting away. Uh, as it seems, like he's gonna be stuck in the basement forever, like every other cryo character is, as it seems. So, um, we'll never getting that Risley review that I really wanted. Nice! Oh my goodness. Anyway, uh, like the video if you liked it, sub to the channel to help it out, and uh, I'll see you in another video. Goodbye.